Anytime. Now to the U.S. economy and the last key indicator to be released ahead of Election Day. The October jobs report shows 261,000 new jobs were added. That's down 54,000 from the month before. The unemployment rate edged up slightly to 3.7 percent, but still remains at a nearly 50-year low. So joining us to break this all down is Lori Bettinger. She's the president of Bank Alliance. She's also the former director of the Treasury Department's Troubled Asset Relief Program. Lori, good to see you. So good morning. <laughs> what do these numbers mean uh, and what does it tell you more importantly about the strength or lack thereof of the economy? I think we definitely still have a strong job market. You know, there's different parts of the economy that, you know, are probably doing better than others. The job market clearly doing better than, for example, the housing market. But, you know, I think this was a good jobs report. It came in above expectations. I think a lot of people thought there'd be about 200,000 new jobs. You know, we clearly saw more than that. The unemployment rate did edge up. But, you know, we saw hiring across a lot of different sectors. I think the job games were led by healthcare, professional services, I think manufacturing of sort of the durable goods, like your washing machines and items like that. Um, still travel and leisure doing well, as we hear about, you know, everyone wanting to go to hotels and eat out in restaurants. I think, you know, some sectors are cooling and we need to keep an eye on that. You know, the number of unemployed people actually went up by 300,000, which, you know, is certainly a sign of some cooling. But overall, this feels like a pretty positive report to me. So here's the thing, positive because people have jobs and there are jobs out there. Right. But that's not what the Federal Reserve wants. Right. right. They right. they because because when fewer people have jobs, that means there's less money to spend. That means inflation goes down. So that's not happening. The Federal Reserve raised interest rates again this week by three quarters of a percentage point. You know, what does this new data say about the Fed's strategy and whether or not it's working? Yeah, you know, you raise a great point. And one thing I didn't say is the wages continue to increase, which, you know, clearly is something the Fed watches closely and can increase inflation. So it's it's hard to say, you know, this we were not adding jobs the pace we were earlier this year when it was three, four, five hundred, you know, once even six hundred thousand new jobs in a month. So I think that, you know, you can see a slowing of the market, which I'm assuming policymakers are looking to see, right? Because they want to see the economy slow. But, you know, maybe people are being a little more thoughtful about hiring decisions, but you still have a really strong job market, which means, you know, that people are going to be paying more to attract new workers, which, of course, leads to rising prices. So I don't think that, you know, necessarily if you're a policymaker, you would see anything here that says, ooh, inflation's under control, the market's slowing, we can stop raising interest rates. You know, hopefully you start to see some signs of the effect of, you know, a slowdown without, you know, a complete, you know, terrible recession. But, you know, you really have to, I think, tease this out here. Hmm. Um, Lori, as you know, the next week, the Bureau of Labor Statistics right. will release the Consumer Price Index report for the month of October. Uh, what are your expectations? You know, I, I think we're going to continue to see a lot of, you know, core inflation, you know, outside of sort of the energy costs, which tend to move around a lot. You know, expectations are coming in pretty similar to last month where, you know, inflation is running in sort of this high 8%. I, I think we'll see that again. It doesn't seem like a lot has changed that would cause, you know, price, the inflation to slow. But, you know, hopefully it won't come in way above expectations again. But, you know, as everyone talks about, like in different parts of the economy, you know, these price, no one sees prices going down and you continue to see these little increases. And we're hearing companies say, hey, you know, we're doing well in this environment. There's a lot of demand. This is a good time for us to raise prices. I think, you know, we heard more of that this week. So we'll have to see what comes out next week. Lori Bettinger, thank you so much. So let's bring in CBS News senior White House correspondent Weijia Jiang to talk a little bit more about how the White House is reacting. I'm sure this is an opportunity for the White House to celebrate a little, especially because, Weijia, we are just four days away from Election Day. Democrats are still trying to make up, for, make up some ground on the economy and their messaging on the economy. It doesn't seem to be landing. Uh, is this jobs report good or bad news for the Dems? Well, I think President Biden will surely say that it is great news. They haven't commented yet because legally they cannot. They have to wait an hour. Um, but I'm sure that we will hear from him today uh, very similar remarks that he made the last time a jobs report came out, which also showed a significant increase in jobs and better than expected number, just like we saw today. Um, I, I think that he'll say a lot of the same things, which is that, you know, since he became president, he has been able to add a historic number of jobs that he is building from the middle out and that the economy ultimately will be stronger, even though, you know, this is a transition period and it's not happening all of a sudden. Um, so I think, you know, he will rely on this 
to make his final argument because this is the last significant jobs report that we'll see before Election Day. And as you mentioned, Anne-Marie, he has struggled a bit uh, to deliver the message on the economy. And that's coming from members of his own party. Um, that's coming from lawmakers and officials who have publicly expressed frustration because on the one hand, they see you know, the president's agenda, they see the things that they should be able to tout, on the other hand, they worry that that is just not resonating with voters because, um, you know, when it comes to their personal finances, they are just not feeling this economic relief. Uh, so I think it's tricky because even though this is, as you guys just talked about, a very solid jobs report, I think what matters is what people are experiencing in their daily lives. And I don't know that this translates because, uh, you know, so many people we talk to say they, they still need a lot of help. Right. So, Ouija, I mean, that, that's the question for the administration, the messaging that has been coming from the White House and those who uh, the White House sends out to talk to reporters and to the Sunday talk shows, I mean, what is the message to voters who say, look, I sometimes can look at the hard data and glean some insight from it, which tells me uh, that in some aspects, the economy is strong, for example, when it comes to jobs. But look, it's more expensive to put gas in my car. It's more expensive right. to feed my family. Um, school supplies cost a lot of issue. Forget the supply issues that we've been talking about for the last you know, year. Um, and so how is the White House prepared to address those real concerns that people have? They've really been trying to paint two distinct pictures of the future. So the problem, Vlad, is that, you know, people want instant relief. They want instant gratification a lot of times, and they're not willing to look that far ahead when, you know, they're struggling to pay rent or put food on the table. But, you know, the president and Democrats are trying to say, look, if Republicans take over, if they win um, on Election Day, then things are going to get drastically worse. Um, they're going to repeal, you know, a lot of the measures or try to repeal the measures that are already in place to try to offer people some relief. And, you know, you're going to be even worse off than you are now. Uh, whether or not that message is landing and sticking is to be determined because, again, it's difficult to look that far ahead when you are dealing with challenges in the now. Um, but that is their strategy. And I think that, uh, like I mentioned, um, you know, there was a congressman down in Louisiana, uh, Troy Carter, who was very blunt in an interview and said, look, we haven't done a good job about communicating. And I know that because of the conversations I'm having in barbershops. Um, and, you know, that's a, a, a reference to just how everyday people are feeling about this economy, despite, you know, a, a report like today. So I think the message is give us a chance because we will do better than the Republicans. But, you know, that's that could be a tough sell. So, Ouija, I mean, one of the things that I'm curious about is we've been talking and there has been speculation from the polling that suggests that Republicans are perhaps poised to take control of the House of Representatives. The Senate looks to be a trickier situation. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. But but I wonder, you know, if we recall uh, President Obama's first term, uh, I mean, he there was it was a shellacking. I think even the former president called That's it a shellacking. Used, yeah. It was it was more than 60 seats, I believe, that uh, uh, that flipped to to the Republican side. We're probably not going to see that. But the right. question, I guess, for the administration is how do they message it with Democrats so it doesn't look like this is a referendum on the first two years of President Biden's administration, given that, unlike President Obama, there have been some Democrats talking about perhaps the president not running in 2024. You didn't hear that kind of talk from Democrats mm -hmm. back in 2010. Right, right. it but was just a given. That, exactly. Of course he's going to run again, yeah. Um, I think that has been a challenge because on the one hand, President Biden insists that you know this election is not a referendum on him and his policies. And we've seen Democrats try to distance themselves from the president um, in their races because they are very aware of his polling numbers. They're very aware that he is unpopular. On the other hand, uh, the president has spent so much time touting all the agenda items that he's been able to accomplish. So it's hard to have it both ways. You can't say, you know, these are all the great things that my administration has done and which is why you should continue to vote um, and, and support Democrats and also say, but 
you're not actually voting on me and my agenda. So I think that's why they're really trying to deliver um, a distinct message, uh, drawing a contrast with Republicans rather than just focusing solely on the president. But it is, um, it is a challenge because he is the leader of the Democratic Party, like it or not. Indeed. For we those Democrats Jang. who are running. That's right. Uh, we just Jang at the White House for us. We just happy Friday. See you too. Thanks.